Hello everyone, Simon here, brand ambassador for Dilma Tea, and today I have a rip snorter of a dessert that I'm gonna give you. And yes, I use that term rip snorter. I know it's weird, but all I'm trying to say is it's super delicious and absolutely simple as. I'm gonna be making you a rhubarb and apple spiced chai crumble with da -da -da, Earl Grey tea custard. And I'm gonna be using two teas today. I'm doubling up. I've got the spice chai and I've also got the Earl Grey tea, both premium, both Ceylon, both Dilma. Beautiful, beautiful teas. So with this dish, we're gonna start with making the custard. I am putting 250 mils of cream with 125 mils of milk and two sachets of Dilma's Earl Grey, chopping it open and then pouring it in. I know, a little controversial, but I believe this is gonna extract the most amount of flavor because cream and milk doesn't really take in a huge amount of flavor. And I don't want that barrier that you'd get where water could permeate through the tea bag. Opening this up will allow all the flavors to extract into that cream milk mixture. So let's set that up. Let's get that slowly to a simmer. Turn it off. You do not want to boil this because the smell of boiled milk isn't very, very nice at all. Whilst that's warming up, we're going to get a bowl and we're going to crack five eggs, taking only the egg yolks. So five egg yolks in a bowl with 70 grams of caster sugar. We're going to whisk that caster sugar and egg yolk mixture until, uh, I guess, custard-like consistency. Like, but bound together, slightly airy maybe, but not too much because you don't want this to be an airy custard. You want it to be really creamy and thick and delicious. Once we've mixed that sugar and egg yolk mixture together and we have our cream milk Earl Grey tea mixture, nice and hot, we strain our cream milk mixture into a bowl with the eggs and sugar, and then we whisk to incorporate. Okay, make sure it's all incorporated. And then we go back to our pot and we pour through the strainer one more time that now egg, sugar, cream, milk, Earl Grey mixture back into the pan. Bring that to a medium heat and stir constantly. And the best way to know when your custard is ready, one, to not overcook it firstly, but secondly, when you put a shiny spoon in there, you stir it, you pull it out and you rub your finger across the side and the custard the mixture doesn't roll past that finger line. That's a great way to know that your custard is perfect. Pour that one more time into a jug and put it in the fridge. You want that to cool down. Finally, while your custard is cooling down, we're then gonna move on to our beautiful apple and rhubarb mixture. This to me ugh, is delicious. Roughly chop your apple and your rhubarb and put it into a bowl. Then put in some beautiful brown sugar, uh, a big squeeze of lemon, preferably about half a lemon, and start mixing that around. You just want that beautiful flavor of sweet, sour, and fresh fruit. Really, really delicious. Get that balance right. It's gonna be well worth it in the end. So pour the rhubarb and apple mixture into your tray. You're gonna sort of layer the bottom of this. This is gonna be where the flavor bomb is gonna come from. So you want this to be delicious as well. Then we're gonna move on to our crumble. And our crumble has got our second tea, our spice chai. This is fantastic. And I'm gonna chop it open and I'm gonna sprinkle out those beautiful chai spices because I can mix this whole thing through. I'm also gonna add some raw sugar because raw sugar doesn't really melt as much and it crystallizes and it gets crunchy. I'm also gonna add some salt, very important, it creates balance. And then of course my oats and some flour and finally some brown butter. Now, I've made that brown butter by putting a big chunk of butter in a pan on low heat and bringing it to a sort of basically like a simmer or it starts to foam up and you can see the color change. The butter is gonna go a nice nutty brown and smelling nutty as well. It is really, really beautiful. Mix it together until it's really nicely incorporated. Everything's coated beautifully. That is done and that is ready to go. You have your apple and rhubarb sitting in your tray and then grab your oat mixture and just layer it over the top. This is gonna cover everything. Don't push it down because the high bits are gonna create color. They're gonna get some nice charry, burny flavors and it's gonna really add to this dish. You want that color and throw it in your oven. 180 degrees for about 25, 30 minutes. Check it, make sure you're getting a nice crust on top and you can hear that beautiful sizzle and boil of your lovely fruits at the bottom starting to caramelize and take on a lot of flavor. 
once you have finished cooking it for that amount of time and you're ready to take it out, pull it out of the oven, let it rest. You need to let it rest just for a little bit of time so all those juices start to suck back up into the fruit and into that crumble and then so when you spoon it out you get big spoons of it not a big ugly mess you can do either or but if you do it this way i guarantee you it's just going to have a little bit more flavor you then go back to that fridge remember what was in there our amazing dilma earl grey tea custard oh! you are going to take that and you are going to just do the most artistic slow pour you possibly can over everything. Get a spoon. Go to town on that. That, my friends, is an Earl Grey custard apple and rhubarb spiced chai crumble. Oh, heavenly. Enjoy it. <laughs>